this is a short tutorial to run through all the tabs and all the tools that are on that are in these tabs in SketchUp Make 2017. Okay, so let's start with the file tab. Here you're going to have some common commands that are you will find in most uh, programs. So for new, you can start a new drawing or new project, open, open an existing project, save or save as. Save as is quite important because you can save down to an older version, which helps if you can find an older version. So we tend to use this if we're exporting this to other 3D packages. So we'll try and save it down. Okay, so that's that in a nutshell. Okay, save a template. So you could make a template and then save this as a template. Um, just note with SketchUp Make, this won't work too well because you need the Pro version for this to work correctly. The next one, which is quite important, is the geolocation. So a geolocation will position your model in a real world environment. So it will bring up Google Maps and it'll allow you to geolocate your building. Okay, let's try that again. For some reason, it didn't want to work. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is where you can, so wherever this cross is in the middle of the screen, you can position your building. This is important if you want to use the shadow and sun effects in SketchUp. So find where you're going to be located and where you want to work. There's another way where you can enter an address, just like in Google Maps, you can enter an address. Okay, so that's that in a nutshell, but we'll discuss this in more depth later on. Okay, 3D Warehouse is where you can go and download models. So 3D Warehouses, um, you can Google 3D Warehouse and you can get access to all these models. So for example, if you're looking for something, you can type cars and you search and then you can download a whole lot of objects. For example, uh, let's try that again, cars. So here you can go and download these into your model directly. So it's asking you download. You can literally just click the download, but the download button and it'll download it into your file. So in essence, it's like a library and you can contribute to this library as well. Okay. So that's 3D warehouse. You can share your models. Here you can import uh, models from other packages. Just note that it's quite limited. So you can import from other 3D software. Export, you can export these models as well. So export a 3D model, 2D graphic. Okay, unfortunately 2D graphic you're limited to images. Okay, print setup, if you want to print your screen for example, this you probably won't have this print view view print, and then this is just a history of stuff that I've opened. Okay. And that's, you can exit the program by clicking exit. The next tab is edit. So here you can undo and redo stuff while you're working. So, and it shows you the shortcuts on how to do that. The next one is cut, copy and paste, which is very similar to a lot of other software out there. Paste in place, which is good if you, for example, if I control, if I click this car and I go to edit and I say cut, and I go back to edit and I say paste in place, it'll paste it back in exactly the same place, so that's quite handy to know. Okay, uh, delete guides, this is quite handy if you've used the tape measure tool to create all these construction lines, these are guides, you can quickly go and say delete all guides, and it'll delete all guides. Okay, so I'm just going to go to edit and say undo arrays. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is select all, you can select all objects, using that command select none for example edit and then there's an option sometimes if you want to hide something you click on the object go to edit and you're going to go hide okay then it's hidden in the view just remember you need to unhide it again so you need to go to hit uh, unhide last or all so th this will be the last hidden object for example okay that's how that works and then lock so for example, you can select an object and lock it as well. 
it will go red it means that you can't move it or delete it uh, and then you can go and unlock it again unlock all okay uh, the next tool will be an edit will be intersect faces okay so make components and make group we'll get to at a later stage close group or component we'll get to, we'll cover this in a later stage but in essence you get a block and you get a group I mean a component and a group so a component it's like a group except for example if I click this car this will be a component and if you go to model info it will tell you that it's a component and it'll tell you it's a car okay if it's a group it's a bit different but we'll explain that in a later stage okay so that's what that covers intersect faces okay that's important if you draw a rectangle and I'll pull this rectangle up then I'll draw another rectangle let's draw a, a sphere select the whole object move this and I'm going to put it into that face like that. So what you can do now is you select all these objects and then you're going to go to edit and you're going to say intersect faces with selected then if I delete the shape you'll notice that it would have intersected it's a good way to cut stuff out okay so it would have intersected with that face and left that shape there okay so you can erase this for example and it would have left that shape Okay, so it intersected with this other geometry. We use this from time to time when we want to cut stuff up, but I'll explain that in more in depth. But in essence, if you follow this instructor tool as well, if you don't know what something is, if I go to, you select an object and you want to, this will explain what it is as well. Okay, so that's intersect faces, components. You can go and say, if you've selected a component in view, you can, I mean, in edit, you can go and say, edit components you can explode it you can um, share this content you can change the access of this you can yeah so this is when you've got a component you can go and say I want to edit this component and you see now I can edit this component I can delete a door for example you anyway, I'll get to that later stage okay so that's the edit tab the next one is the view tab okay view tab is where we'll go and select your toolbars so that's in the view tab if you want to go and add more toolbars okay hidden geometry so whatever's hidden it will show you in the project so if there's hidden geometry in the background in essence it's doing the same it's doing the same trick it's doing here okay I'm not sure if I edit and I go say edit hide it will show objects that are hidden as well so that's what that tool does in view so if you're gonna say there the geometry is hidden but if I go to view and I say hidden geometry so everything that's hidden I can go and say unhide now and it'll bring it back so it shows me stuff that is hidden by accident so it's a good tool to see if you maybe got hidden stuff in the project that's way in the distance okay so that's good that's good to know switch off hidden geometry these will will cover in a later these are just um, so if you don't want to see the guides you can switch them on and off very quickly um, view if you don't want to see your axis you can switch it off as well okay the next thing is shadows you can switch shadows on and off but you can control the shadows with another toolbar that we'll add later but in essence you can set the time of day using shadows so that's what that does okay the next one is fog fog allows you to like make things disappear so in essence you're just adding fog to the scene so we set off and then the rest of these edge style all these kind of things are actually driven by these toolbars that are usually on all the time okay so here, for example, if um, a component edit, if I tick this, if I double and I work on this component, you'll notice that it hides everything else, which is quite neat because then it means you can work on something in isolation. Okay, that's all that that tool does. Switch everything back on. Okay, 
But you'll see here it will also tell you. So if I go back to components, I mean view, uh, component edit, hide similar, it will just mean it will hide all the other objects that are of the same component, will hide them all while you work on one. Okay, so you can toggle with these. Now this last one is um, animation. You can animate a scene by using um, your scenes tool, but we'll tackle that a bit later. So in essence, you create a couple of snapshots, and what SketchUp will do is stitch them together and make a video file of those snapshots. Okay, so that's animation. Okay, the next toolbar is camera. So this is if you've got a couple of scenes open, this will just jump. So previous and next will jump through them. The next one is your standard views. So this is top. So in essence, it's doing what this does. Okay. So those are your standard views. Then parallel projection. Okay, so we are currently in perspective mode. And you want to change this to parallel projection. You'll notice that everything is no longer three-dimensional, but it's 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 a parallel projection. We'll tackle this a bit later, especially if you want to start making plan views and you want to see it exactly flat. So if I look at top and I switch on camera and I go to perspective, you'll notice that there's a perspective which is technically not correct. If you want to create a plan view, you want to use camera parallel projection so that it's totally flat. Okay, that's what that does. Go back to perspective. Again, you can use two point perspective. So you can set up these vanishing points like you would create and draw a perspective. Okay, so that's that's that in a nutshell. So jump back to uh, perspective. Okay, the next tool is um, photo match. We'll we'll cover this in a bit more in depth later on. It's quite a handy tool and it's a tool that we'll use quite a bit. The next ones is like Orbit. But then again, all these tools are here already. Okay, so that's Orbit, Zoom, Zoom Extents, which is these tools here, Zoom Previous, Zoom Window. So that's all these tools here, but we'll, just, we'll cover this in a bit more depth later on. The next one is Camera Projection, which is quite interesting. It's this tool over here. So all that this does is it allows you to say, I want to stand here, and then it allows you to look around the scene. Okay, so that's what this does. So camera projection, I want to stand there and look at that. Okay, and then it allows you to change your eye level. So here, for example, my eye level needs to be 1,600, so I'll look straight at him. Then I can use my eye tool, look around the scene, and then I can use a walk tool to walk around the scene. Okay, so in essence, that's all that these are doing. So you can switch that off, go back to camera, switch that off. Okay, all right, so that's all that that's doing. It just allows you to, to walk around your scene. Okay, all but great. So that's that in a nutshell. Look around. Okay, that's all we need to cover the camera. The next one is the draw. In essence, all of these tools are covered here, but this is start with lines. So here you get a, a line, the normal line tool with a shortcut and freehand. So that's line and freehand. The next one is all the arc tools. So here's all the arc tools, all the different shapes, rectangle, rotate rectangle, circle, polygon. And then the last one is sandbox. Okay, sandbox is slightly different. Sandbox allows you to create so in essence, if you want to create like a terrain, so the first one would be sandbox, and let's say uh, from sketch. So here you're going to go and create a basic, and this is how most terrains work. So here's a terrain. Then if I double click and edit work in the group, and I use the move tool, I can manipulate these, and using the up key, you can manipulate these to form like a terrain. So you can build like a rough terrain using this tool. Uh, yeah. So you can build like terrains using this tool. Or alternatively, if you need to build contours. So contours are levels from sea level. That's, for example, if you've ever looked at a topographical map, it will have all these lines with different heights. Those are contours. So in essence, I'm just going to create a rough 
So if this was going to be my contour map, for example, okay, I'm going to grab the first set of free line work, and I'm going to use the move tool. I'm going to use the blue arrow key. I'm going to say my contour will work like that in essence. So it's just how the, the site would be graded, for example. Move up tool. Okay, so say now that was my contours that I need to create a site from. You can select all of these. All those objects, you're going to go back to draw sandbox and you're going to say from contours and then it builds the terrain following those contour lines that you had used. You can delete those contour lines or you can keep them there, it's your decision. But now effectively I've made a surface to follow those contours. Okay. That's that in a nutshell. Draw. Okay, the next one is tools. Okay, the, once again, these are all these tools that are listed down here. So we can go through everything. The the sections we'll cover later, unwrap surfaces. This is a bit more of an advanced tool, which we'll discuss later. So I'm not going to really go into too much depth about this. The one I'd like to talk about is here's another sandbox tool. I won't go into too much depth about this later. We'll cover that in a later video. But Intersect is quite an interesting tool. So Interact is if you've got some of these objects, some of these components that you get from SketchUp will allow you to, for example, open the door, change the wheels, how they turn, and maybe change its color. Okay, so certain objects will have this interaction function. Okay, for example, this tree, it might change the way the tree looks. You can change some of the leaves to make it look so that your, your trees don't look all the same. So you can interact with some of these components. Not all of them, for example, this bench and, the, and this model of a person, Chris, they don't have that interact function, but some do. Okay, components that have that functionality will have this, this is a dynamic component. Okay, for example, like the bed, if I drop the bed in and I use the interact tool, see it's, it's, it's changing the size of the bed. So it's a single bed, double bed. So it's a great little tool. Okay, but just first check, it'll tell you this is a dynamic object. Okay, so get rid of the bed, don't need that. Okay, so back to, so that's that's in a nutshell. The access tool is quite handy if you want to create accesses, a new access to work around. Okay, just remember you can reset it by clicking on the access tool, but we'll cover that in a, in a bit more depth later on. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. Protractor tape measure, outer shell. Okay, outer shell is another tool that we need to discuss. For example, I have two blocks that I've made. Okay. Make group. And I'm going to make another rectangle here. Make group. Okay. So if I move these two and I intersect them with each other, you will notice that. Um, these objects don't intersect each other correctly. So if I use the, the if I use this tool, for example, let's say this tool like that, and I'm going to show. Okay, you'll see that these objects intersect each other, but they don't cut each other. But if I select both of these objects and I go to Tools and I click Outer Shell, watch what it does. It combines the objects into one object. So that's a very handy tool. Okay, get rid of that. Go back to that, show my materials. Okay, that's my next. Okay, so that's outer shell for the next one. So windows, default trays where you go and switch on your trays. So remember that, manage trays, you can go and create new trays if you want. So you can create some new trays. But that's if once you start getting comfortable with the software, I recommend doing that. Okay, the next one, model info. So this model info tool is we use this quite a lot. It tells you a lot about the project that you're working with currently. So for example, you can go and change your units, for example, here. 
text, you can go and set up your font styles and change your leader styles. Statistics is very important. Sometimes if you bring in a lot of components, a lot of them stay hidden in the, in the project. So you can say purge unused. It just cleans up your drawing a lot. And if your drawing is having a lot of errors, you can fix problems here as well. Fix your drawing. Rendering, it's just you can use this to improve the quality of your, your display. Geolocation. Geolocation, like we discussed in the beginning, you can go and set a location manually and you can get this information from Google Earth Pro. I'll explain that in a later video. Or you can go and add, and add a new location here as well, which brings up this again and you can move it again and it will relocate your project to that new location. Okay, file. This just gives you uh, a bit about your, your project. Dimensions, you can go and set up dimension styles, credits. It's just telling you, you can say claim credit and you can put your name in. So if you create an account, it just, when you publish a component, you can, okay. We'll discuss this a bit later, but in essence, when we were looking at the camera function and I mean the view function, you can hide certain things. That's all it does. And that's just got to do with how the projects are animated. That's that in a nutshell. Let's go back to window. So preferences. In preferences is all the settings for um, SketchUp, so like the access colors, you can go and change that all here. You can go and customize it to the look and feel. You can make it suit your needs. In essence, once again, these are just little settings that you can go and play with and explore. I never change anything. I might just increase. If, you're, if you've got a good computer, you can increase this a bit. And you can use maximum check to sizes, which is quite good to, to know it's there. Okay. Shortcuts, you can go and create new sh shortcuts, templates. It just shows you where your template files and then workspace, you can go and reset your workspace if you've made a mistake. So if you want to start right from the beginning, you can go and reset your workspace over here. Okay. So that's that in a nutshell. Window again. Okay. All this other stuff we've discovered earlier, you can go to 3D Warehouse. Extension Manager, we won't discuss in this video because it's not relevant to this version of SketchUp. The rest of the stuff we, you'll never really use. And then the last one is the help command where you can get a bit more information about SketchUp. There's a knowledge center, a website where you can get more information on using SketchUp. Okay.